Now, many people struggle with understanding how to write down the bounds for the double integral. So let's say you have this triangular region and the corners are one and three on the y-axis and two comma three. Um, so how, how do you write down this domain? Well, first, before doing anything else, you need to know the equation of this line. Well, it's not that hard in this case because I know that it's a line, so it's with mx plus b, and uh, this y-intercept is one, so I know that that's one. To get the slope, it's rise over one, so rise is two, and run is also two, so you get uh, m equals to two over two, which is one, which means that the equation for this side is y equals x plus one. Now, uh, what you want to think about is this is a double integral. Double integrals, when you write it down, say dy dx is a, a little easier than dx dx dy. Um, when you write this down, you have to know that the outer one is the usual integral. It's, it's some number to number, so that's that's number to number. But the hard part is what goes in here. And because it's a double integral, what happens is it's from an equation to equation. Right? So what you need to put here is it's, it's from line to line. And once you know that, then everything else just falls in its, to its place. So it's, it's easy. All right. Now, uh, a, a helpful analogy that I like to use is that whenever you put dy or dx inside, look at what's inside, and think about the direction that you're integrating. So dy means it's an increment in the y direction, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to paint this region D going upwards. And that's why I'm saying that you start at this line and you end at this line. The equation for this is y equals to x plus one. So you put y equals to x plus one here. And the equation for this, it's a horizontal line. What's the equation for a horizontal line? That's y equals a number, right? That number, because it passes th through three, this equation is y equals to three. So you put y equals to three. And that really says you start from this line, you end at that line. Now once you integrate out, what happens is that uh, integrating is like adding things up, right? So everything adds up and you end up with an integral, everything being added up and tallied up at this, this space right here, added. So now your x varies from zero to two, so the number is from zero to two. So that's it, that's how you write down the, the integral. Now what's a little more challenging is how would you write down if it was dx dy? The function here doesn't change, but uh, if you use dx, now the direction is increment in the x direction, so instead of painting this region upwards, what you do is you, you go right. You're painting this this way. You start from this, you, you end there. Now the equation for this, it's a vertical line, so what's, what's this equation? This equation is x equal to zero. Remember, vertical lines have e uh, equation x equals a number, and since it passes through zero, x equal to zero is this, this right here. And then uh, over here, over here, this is, uh, well, uh, see, in a regular integral, if you have integral of a function dx, and if you put uh, five to 100 or whatever, if you put numbers here, Really what's happening is that eventually you integrate this and you plug in values for x. So really what's missing here is that it's x equals to five and x equals 100. So whenever you have dx here, the, the value should be written as x equal to something to x equal to something. So although I said that this line has the equation y equals x plus one, this now has to be changed into subtract one both sides and you get y minus one equals to x, and this is the equation you have to put in here because you're forced to say x equals to x equals to. So here, 
it should be y minus 1. And here it should be, uh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. It's, it's, it's going this way. So you start from here, which is one, x equal to 0. And you end up at this line, which, which is uh, y minus 1. Right? And then uh, once you integrate, add up everything that gets tallied up, and it goes from 1 to 3, right? So here it's 1 to 3. Now, you might wonder, well, if you can do one way, why do you have to know both ways? Well, it turns out that in a lot of cases, one direction is easier than the other. In this case, this is easier to calculate because uh, if you integrate y, y is a constant, so integrating by x just simply gives you xy. And you're plugging in x equal to y minus 1 and x equal to 0, and uh, 1 to 3. So when you plug this in, y minus 1 times y, that's y squared minus y. When you plug in 0, that's nothing. So you're integrating 1 to 3 of y squared minus y dy, which is 1 third y cubed minus 1 half y squared. You plug in 3 and 1. And eventually, what's that? If you plug in 3, that's 9. 9 over 2 is what you get if you plug in 3. You plug in 1, you get negative 1 6. So minus 1 6. Let's see, let's do some mental math. That's uh, 27 over 6 plus 1, so that's 28 over 6, which is 14 over 3. So that's the answer. And uh, if you try to do the same thing over here, try it. You're seeing that this is harder. Not only that, in some cases, uh, one will be impossible to do, and the other one is possible. So uh, it's, it's important to know how to write down the integral in both directions.